Keto and crime, keto and crime. We uncover the crime on keto and crime. Keto and crime, keto and crime. Now is the time for keto and crime. Hey everyone, Tracy here from Keto and Crime. Thank you so much to every single one of my patrons and channel members. You make this possible. And, uh, you're one of the reasons I do this, and I thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if I haven't said it before, thank you. I'll sing it. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with me and letting me geek out, not making fun of me like a lot of other people do, because I like weird stuff about crime and dark history. Re, re. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Keto and Crime. Got my little... Easter gnome bunny friend here. This is the reason I'm known as the weird true crimer. Not the hot one, not the really smart one, just the weird one. But you know what? I'll take it. Anyhow, no gnome left behind, buddy. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. I've got a very uh, kind of different video for you today. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Brittany Griner. And I think we all kind of know who she is. She is um, the WNBA player that was detained in Russia in the February, early March for possession of drug and drug paraphernalia. So we're going to talk about her. We're going to talk about what happened. We're also going to look at a couple of other cases where Americans or Westerners got caught up in uh, kind of Eastern country laws and ended up having to uh, kind of pay the piper over there a little bit. And then we're going to kind of discuss opinions about what's going on with her and I think it'll be fun. So let's start. She was born around 1990. She played for Baylor uh, as a in the NCAA as a, in women's basketball. Immensely talented player. She was one of the first the first NCAA player to score I think 2,000 points and um, 500 blocks slash rebounds in a season. So immensely immensely talented athlete she stands 6'9 and weighs just over 200 pounds is her recorded uh play weight she um she was drafted in 2013 as the first round uh by the phoenix mercury one of the more well-known WNBA players and has like a lot of WNBA players, has played both her career there and in European leagues where they can play in what is the American offseason. 2014, I believe she played for a China league, and then since 2015, she has played in the Russian Women's League. According to records, her pay, I'm not sure what her pay was in Russia, but for China, she would play a four-month season over there and earns very close to $600,000, which, according to her, was 12 times more than what she earned in the WNBA. Now, I know there's a lot of controversy about the pay gap between women and men's sports. I mean, there's a lot of factors to consider there. So, and the fact that the NBA subsidizes the WNBA. But let's just say that they make high five figures to six figures to play basketball. So, 600000 yeah, and then they have the opportunity to play in off-seasons and earn a whole lot more. So, I don't want to get into that debate. We can, we can do that another time if that interests you. I can do a breakdown. But, uh, let's just say she was earning well over with everything, earning very close to a million dollars a year. Now, what happened? Let's talk about the day she was taken into custody in Russia. Last of February, 1st of March, uh, Russian officials announced they had taken seven-time uh, WNBA All-Star Brittany Griner into custody for possession of a hashish or cannabis CBD oil 
cartridge that was found in her luggage, according to Russian officials and from the surveillance uh, video that we've been able to see. Um, she was uh, seen going through customs and then a little bit later on uh, talking to uh, Russian customs officials, obviously saying no, no, no. So she was taken into custody because CBD is not legal in Russia. It's considered drugs and drug paraphernalia. So she is facing time in a Russian prison for the crime. Now, a lot of the... Uh, uproar seems to be that people feel that she's being held as a political prisoner because tensions between Russia and the United States with the Ukrainian war are very, very high. I guess that's not totally out of the question, but uh, I would think if they're going to take somebody a political prisoner, it would be somebody a lot more high profile. No offense to her. Because I honestly, I don't follow the WNBA. I don't follow the NBA. So I wouldn't have known who she was unless until this whole controversy came out. So I would think that they would hold somebody a lot more whole profile if that was their game. I haven't heard about uh, any other Americans in general being taken into custody for... Uh, in mass since the Ukrainian war, the ones that are still in Russia. So, I mean, but you know, it's Putin keeps a very tight lid on the news over there. So who knows, but that's just my thing. And according to the U S embassy and other people that have communicated with both her and her uh, Russian representation, they say that it's going to be a long, hard road to get her out. I would say because of a, it was found in her luggage. Now, whether or not she put it there or it was planted, that's for a trial judge to figure out. It's for a jury or a trial judge to figure out, I suppose. But it was there and she was taken into custody. She broke Russian law. And I think with Americans and Westerners in general, that is Western Europe, Canada, U.S., Mexico, Australia, New Zealand, we all kind of are a little arrogant when we travel. We think that we're, a lot of us think that we're kind of above the laws of the land, wherever we are, and that's just not so. I always think of it like this, um, like Star Trek, the prime directive, the number one rule of the Federation is not to interfere in the laws of any planet, world, community where you're visiting. And I, I believe that is the case. And I believe if you are going willingly to live or visit another country, you have to make it a point to know their laws and make sure that you're not uh, breaking the laws. Now, being that she has played in a Russian league since 2015, I can't understand why she wouldn't know the Russian stance on things like CBD oil. Uh, and just not have any honor, you know, forego that, at least in public or when you're at a place like an airport where you're going to be searched, uh, forego that, forego that. I mean, it could be that it was in her carry-on and she forgot about it, but, you know, I, I suppose, but still, if I'm going to Russia and I play there, you know, every, I've played there every season for six years, five, six years, and I know that CBD is illegal. I'm not going to have it anywhere on me. I'm probably not going to use it for 30, 60 days before I go in case there's you know, urine or blood testing. I'm going to be careful. And I can't understand why such an intelligent woman as this would, uh, a well-traveled woman, 
would not uh, be aware of that. I mean, I guess there's always the chance it was planted, but that's delving into conspiracy theory. So what's my opinion on this? I think she's going to pay the piper. I think she's going to have to get a Russian lawyer and she's an attorney and she's going to have to fight this, go through the system. And unfortunately, with everything going on now, Russia has a lot more problems than Brittany Griner and her sheesh oil or hash oil. So it's, yeah, I think she's going to be in a Russian prison for a, a jail for a long, long time, unfortunately, unless the embassy can pull some strings. But with relations between Russia and the United States being absolutely zero, I don't know how much help we're going to be. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, she kneeled during the national anthem. She had domestic uh, violence charges with her first wife. But if you delve into that, it was actually a fist fight between her and her ex-wife who were both WNBA players. So it was just something that got out of control and they were both involved. So she's not an abuser, at least as far, not far as I know. As far as kneeling for the national anthem, I don't like that. I think it's disrespectful. But then again, everybody, we are in a free country and everybody can do as they want. So... She's still an American citizen, and if there was a way to get her out, I think we should, but I also think she's smart enough to know not to break the laws of the country. I mean, you, you've been in China, and you've been in Russia. These are Eastern countries. Their philosophies on a lot of things are a lot different, and also people are bringing up the fact that homosexuality was just decriminalized within the last decade in Russia. Decriminalized. Within, so you, you're not executed for it anymore or imprisoned for it anymore in in Russia. But yet here is an openly lesbian woman. I mean, obviously lesbian woman in Russia. I suppose that could play into it as well. But you again, you take the risk. I'm gay. If my wife and I travel to an Eastern country where it's frowned upon or it's still illegal, like in some of the Middle Eastern countries, like in some of the African countries, that's my friend. That's my sister. It's not my wife. We're going to obey the laws of the country that we're in. We're going to obey the social mores and standards of the country that we're in. That's my prime directive, and that should be everyone's prime directive. So she, she kind of did the, did the crime, and I think she's going to end up having to do the time. Uh, yeah. So that's Brittany Griner, and that's my opinion on it. But this is not the first case of an American or a Westerner in general getting caught up in another country's laws. Let's talk about one that dominated the new cycle when I was a teenager. And then we're going to talk about one where I think the woman was an innocent pawn in it. But let's talk about another where it's obviously forgetfulness or just out and out breaking the law. Let's check that out. This is Michael Fay. Today, on the right, to the left, this is him in 1994 when he was arrested and convicted of spray-painting cars and stealing traffic signs in Singapore. Uh, and he was sentenced to 84 days in a Singapore prison as well as six strikes of the cane. Caning. And I'll drop a little video here. But yeah, so that's not pleasant. But uh, there was a big uproar about whether or not he should be received leniency because he is an American. Um, and ultimately, President Clinton did appeal to the government of Singapore. And as a result, he got two less lashes. So he had four lashes with the cane instead of six. And so he did get a little bit of leniency. But even the president himself kind of said, you know, you, you kind of got caught red-handed spray painting cars. You broke the laws of Singapore and you're going to face the law just like any resident of Singapore. And he did. He's had some run-ins with the law since. Uh, he said because he got addicted to drugs and other foreign substances such as paint thinner and stuff like that to forget what happened to him in Singapore. I guess that could happen. Post-traumatic stress is the thing. But uh, bottom line, dude, you spray-painted cars. 
and you got caught and you were punished. And if you hadn't spray painted the cars, stole the traffic signs, you wouldn't have got punished. So Brittany Griner is not the first American to break a foreign law and get the full brunt thrown at her. So, yeah. Michael Fay. And now let's look at one of an Australian woman who I think was an innocent pawn and kind of caught up in uh, something that wasn't necessarily her fault. This is Maria Elvira Pinto Espasto, who at the age 55 in 2014 was arrested at the Malaysian airport for trafficking methamphetamine. It was in a backpack that she says she had picked up for her fiance who she had only known through line so she was the victim of a romance scam and i am going to do a video about uh about romance scams and this is going to be one of the cases that i highlight that she was arrested and spent many years on death row in malaysia because drug trafficking it's punishable by death in malaysia and uh, she was uh, a lots of appeals. There was one where it was overturned. Then it was she was re-prosecuted. She spent a lot of time in prison, and it wasn't even her fault. Yes, she was duped by somebody pretending to be an American uh, military man that was going to marry her. Blah blah blah. She was a lonely woman that got caught up in it. And anybody that men and women that get caught up in these romance scams, they usually prey on the weakest and the most vulnerable, and people do get sucked into it. So if you are talking to somebody online, the minute they mention money, turn and run in the opposite direction. So bear that in mind, but I am going to do a long video on romance scams. But she was finally released in 2019 after spending five years on death row. According to her, the, the, the female guards at the prison treated her very well. They were all sympathetic. They felt that she was an unwilling participant. She said she had picked up um, the backpack for her fiancé in Singapore and was taking it back to Australia because he was going to leave the service and come live with her in Australia. And then, of course, she willingly gave the bag over at Malaysian Customs to have it searched and they found clothes and other stuff, but d deep down there was the methamphetamine, and she got arrested for it. And she said she had no knowledge. She was evidently being used as a drug mule, and had she gotten home to Australia, I'm sure somebody that knows her fiancé would have contacted her to get the, the meth, had it actually made it through. So it was in the lining of the bag. But yeah, she was, uh, she was duped, and she spent uh, a lot of time in uh, Malaysian prison. So again, the bottom line of these stories is if you are going to a country, research the country. Don't just look where's the best places to stay, eat, have recreation. Look at the laws make and the social mores and make sure that you're living within those while you're there if you don't want to end up like one of these people. I'll continue to watch the Griner case. When there's a break, I will let you know. And until next time, you don't grab.